from the street, you would never know. From the street, it looked like an all normal residential apartment building in the Bronx. Even as you stepped into the basement, everything appeared to be normal. The, the supers, workspace, uh, the furnace, everything you would expect to see in the basement of a, of a residential building. But as you went deeper into it, you got deeper into that world of dogfighting. Following breaking news, dozens of dogs pulled from a Bronx basement late today. Makeshift canine treadmills and exercise equipment, an illegal dog fighting training facility. We're told that around 50 dogs, mostly pit bulls, were discovered in the basement. At least two people were arrested. Police believe the suspects were breeding the dogs to fight. Once the NYPD and the DA's office executed the warrant and secured the scene for us, I went in with a couple folks from our staff and began a walk through and really now began to realize the conditions that these animals were held. Uh, and as you walked closer to where the dogs were housed, you actually walked past the fighting pit. And that really brought it home, seeing this, the, the pit where the, uh, those dogs you know, were fighting for their lives. The injuries we've seen, typical dog fighting, you see a lot of scars, old, old wounds, and as you saw so the animals come out, you see the white marks on their, their front paws, their faces, those are all scars. Seeing those animals in that situation was hard to look at, uh, and knowing why they were there was difficult. You can see that they lived a very hard life, and this experience of coming out into this, this world was, was new to them. At the temporary shelter, the dogs went through a behavior process where we tried to evaluate their ability to potentially be adopted and to decide how we were going to get them to a state of adoptability, uh, what was the best treatment plan. It, it really was, it was hard. It was very hard to see them, dogs that were unaccustomed to leashes, unaccustomed even to a food bowl, uh, unaccustomed to people interacting with them. You could see this by their fear. Uh, they would express that fear. Some of them would flatten to the ground just to avoid having to see or be involved with anything at all. And to see them come as far as they have to the point where we're able to walk them on leash, where they're happy to see and interact with, with humans. This is what you know, I work for. This is what I strive for. Seeing dogs make that, that leap from really terrible circumstances and to see them to the point where they're now being able to be adopted is really what's rewarding to me. Come on, come on, there you go. <laughs> Back in. I talk about him every every day. Yeah, we're like parents. We have pictures. We're showing everyone. <laughs> I never pictured myself as, as a <laughs> as a person. Hey, look at my dog on my phone. I never thought I'd be that type, but yeah. Yeah, he's, he's definitely done it to us. I we have a, a raincoat for him. Yeah. <laughs> we want to get him a Giants jersey. He's just a cutie pie on four legs. <laughs> be able to, to take that animal from that environment to a loving home environment is really what, what the case was all about. There is uh, such a great sense of satisfaction in knowing that they're getting that opportunity to see what a you know, real life is like. It's terrific. 